When I was 11, I was given a genetic test. That's pretty impressive because it was 1955 and this, the double helix, had only been discovered two years earlier. In fact, the idea came from the 1944 Education Act, which set up the 11 plus examination. It was based on the idea that there was a pool of natural and inborn talent among British children that was being missed. The educationists didn't have DNA sequencing machines, but they had tests that they thought would do the job, and they were pretty tough. Find the odd word out, firm, rough, solid, hard, with complex shapes to move around and difficult sums to work out. In fact, the idea of a hidden pool of inborn talent goes back to Francis Galton, Charles Darwin's cousin, who in 1869 wrote a book called Hereditary Genius, which said more or less the same thing about intellectual ability and even about wrestling. Plenty of people believe it today. Take Boris Johnson, who also thinks that most differences in intellectual ability are inborn and that the best should be identified early. In his words, the harder you shake the pack, the easier it will be for some cornflakes to get to the top. That sounds convincing, but it's based on a deep misunderstanding of genetics. It's about the interaction of nature and nurture, which is a lot more subtle than it seems. Education policy has no need to bow down to the merciless truths of genetics because, however important DNA might be, environmental factors, teachers included, are always involved. Any plant or animal breeder who wants to identify the best genes always keeps his subjects in exactly the same environment. And British schools, including Boris Johnson's, certainly can't be accused of that. <laughs>